Hey there, I'm David. I have no idea what this is. Let's do this. A friend of mine from Twitter, by the handle Roar Dennis, known him for a couple of years. He works on uh, he works at Guerrilla Games in the Netherlands. He has worked on games like Killzone and Horizon Zero Dawn. He replied to one of my earlier videos asking me to print this guy, which is apparently a Deathclaw from Fallout 4 video game series. Now, I have to come clean. I've never played a Fallout game. I worked in the games industry for a while, I play a lot of games, but Fallout was just never one of them. So when he asked for it, I looked at the model and thought, wow, that, that looks really cool, I would love to print one. And the way the model was presented, I thought, like, the wood filament would fit it perfectly. I found a model on Thingiverse by a user by the name of Vlad Esviv. Esviv. Um, username Tal34Russ. I'm guessing he's from Russia. Um, and the model had this really cool brown color in the model, and I thought this wooden filament would suit it perfectly. Figured why not? Let me try it out with my, my uh, nice spool of GTEC wood fill filament. And ended up with this. I printed this at a 0.2mm layer height. It took around 10 hours. It was quite a complex model. It also took two prints to get it right. The first one I tried with tree supports, and for some reason, I'm not sure if it's to do with the tree supports, it stringed everywhere. So I had to reprint it. One other interesting thing with this GTEC wood fill is that it sticks to the build plate like nothing I've ever seen before. It might even be worse once it's cold than when it's warm. Um, so actually taking the models off the build plate was quite difficult. The first one, the base actually snapped. So he broke off on his little legs here. But luckily the second one I was a lot more careful with. I managed to take it off in one piece. This filament is also pretty fragile. Uh, you got to be a little bit careful while cleaning it up. Um, he did lose a couple fingers, uh, fingertips as well. But to be honest, because of the, the sort of wooden antique finish that I was going for, I actually kind of like that that happened. It makes it look a little bit less than perfect, which is sort of what I was going for. With the wood fill, one of the great things you can do is stain it. So, just like real wood, this stuff actually absorbs stain. So I went off to the hardware store on the weekend and picked up a tin of oak uh, stain. So, oak color, but it soaked it up really well. So initially, you paint it with the oak stain. After a little bit of sanding, which kind of opens up the, the wood particles. And once you've stained it, it soaks up the stain. Initially it looks quite oily, leave it for about 24 hours like I've left this one and you end up with this beautiful brown finish all over. Now I could definitely run over another sanding pass to give it a couple of light touches or maybe even apply a little bit more of the stain into the little cracks and crevices and give it a little bit more of depth to the model. But I'm actually overall really happy with the way that turned out. It looks like wood, which is kind of what you want from a wood filament. I decided to film the staining process. Let's check that out. I've never done this before, so it's probably not going to be too great. But let's take a stab anyway. I bought some wood stain, an oak sort of color, and I've lightly sanded the model down to expose a little bit of the wood filament. So hopefully when we paint it, it should kind of come through and at least sink in a little bit. It has been stirred, so I'm going to liberally apply the wood stain and hope I can soak up a bunch of this beautiful oaky color into the model and then maybe afterwards wipe it down a bit, at least some of the sections, and see what, what stays out and what doesn't. Give it a nice sort of marbled almost finish.
Now I'm being pretty liberal because, well, yeah, I've never done it before, so might as well, right? See how it turns out. I can always reprint this one. Didn't take that long, so if needed and I like it, I can reprint it. I say this although I don't even know what it is because I've never played Fallout, so you know. Probably won't end up reprinting this. Actually, generally very happy with the quality of the model. If you look at some of the mistakes, some of the things that went wrong, they were mostly related to the fact that this wood PLA is super brittle. The like little breakages, especially on the hands. There's one finger missing from this hand. But overall, quality came out really nicely. You can see the first attempt next to it. It's pretty disgusting. <laughs> uh, my wife said it looked like some something one of the cats coughed up. I don't think that's far from the truth. It's I don't know why I resliced it with basically the same settings, except for switching the sports came out quite alright. So really unsure. All right, just this last little bit of the tail. Get it into all the little nooks. So my cleanup process, I used a steel brush, and on this model, because of the material, it actually worked really well. It um, cleaned up all of the, the little strings that, no, nah, there's still a couple, but it cleaned up most of the little strings. There was a ton of them when I took it off the printer. And, and yeah, it, it basically tears through it because this is quite a quite an odd structured filament. I mean, this is like very very stringy, and it, it's almost like you're making cardboard. It's a little bit odd, but it's quite fun to print with. I've I've done a couple of prints. There's a, a little tray going on in the background right now. Will hopefully be done before I wrap this up. Um, but yeah, this filament's quite interesting. I, I like the variation that it's not just plastic and it, it doesn't feel like plastic. When you're printing with this filament, you tend to get this like really nice sawdusty smell in the background. It's super uh, interesting to walk into a room that just smells like, like a wood workshop, basically. And it's kind of cool. All right, got most of the model. Let me do this base. There's a lot of little little nooks and crannies to fill on the base. Gonna put them on some some absorbent towel or something. You just use some toilet paper. I've got some tissues and toilet paper here. Soak it all up nicely. Well, a bit of an odd color, as you can see. It's a little bit like poop, but it's fine. We'll, we'll soak this up, see how it turns out once it's dried. And then hopefully check back in a couple of hours. Alright, I think that's everything. That's everything. Let me turn him to the camera so you can see. Yeah, uh, it looks pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. Another thing to note about this wood fill filament is that it smells amazing. It's really weird thing to say about you know printing things, but it creates this really nice warm sawdusty smell in the the room. So every time I walk into the room while printing something with it, I feel, I, I don't know, it's just very uplifting kind of smell. I've been printing with stuff for a couple days now uh, in this wood fill filament. Absolutely love it. Um, I do want to try the Color Fab wood fill next time because I have a feeling that will be slightly higher quality. Um, but they also, Color Fab, have a cork fill, which sounds really interesting. Very intrigued. Gonna give it a shot. But so far, very happy with this GTEC one. I'm definitely going to finish this spool. I've got a D&D &D dice holder, which I've been trying to print since I got a 3D printer. 
So I'm going to keep doing that, finish off the D&D dice box, maybe even post a, a video sometime soon of all the little side projects I've been doing for myself, because, I mean, this isn't the only things that I print, I print a lot of stuff for myself. Let's get into that time lapse. Hope you had a good time, and uh, remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Cheers!